Hello everyone. Welcome to another session of Sigmoid Tech Talk series. I am Pratik Sinha, working as lead data scientist at Sigmoid. In this session, I am going to talk about time series clustering. So let's get to it. Time series clustering is a technique that compares time series to group similar looking time series into clusters. So if you look closely on this time series trends, you can see similar looking trends, all these trends which should be clustered into cluster 1 and likewise other similar trends should be clustered into cluster 2 and cluster 3 but how do we define this similarity the definition of similarity can vary from one use case to another for example for one scenario we have to identify products which sell higher on specific dates like in this scenario the peaks are in the same at the same time points so in such case we can calculate the distance between points at the same time indices which is euclidean matching and that will serve our purpose but in other scenario where we have to identify products which sell higher around holidays or a specific season we can see in this example the peaks and the troughs are not aligned on the are, are not aligned on the time points so in such case we need to move one time series with respect to the other and calculate the distance between those peaks and valleys when they are aligned so we need to shift one with respect to other so such scenarios is a, is seen in several other places like variable fitness trackers where dtw can be used for example in this video a person walking at different speeds so we need to calculate the number of steps from the time series for that we need to identify the troughs and peaks when they occur so since they are not aligned with respect to another we need to use dtw which will help us to shift and match the peaks and calculate the steps similarly dtw is used in speech recognition tasks and financial markets now i have i have talked about some use cases of dtw and because that's that's what will help us to to define the distance measures now let's back to get back to the time series clustering and how it fits in in some of the retail use case and here i'm going to take a use case of fashion clothing industry where we have large number of products in the market and a new product is launched every other day and we need to estimate the sales pattern of that new product so how do we estimate so first we'll we take the sales trends of the historical products we cluster them into some clusters using time series clustering and then try to identify some parameters for those clusters for example cluster a is about products of summer clothing fabric cotton style ethnic and similarly we can identify parameters for other clusters once those parameters are identified we also identify the similar parameters for the new item then match it with the cluster and and for example if it is a winter product then it should be in falling into cluster b and then use the sales trends of this cluster to identify the sales trends of this new product so in this way time series clustering helps us to estimate the sales trends of this new product so we come to the end of this session in the next session i am going to take a sample data set and apply time series clustering using python and show how two different measures euclidean and and dtw works on that data set thank you I'm going to discuss about the implementation of time series clustering. I have taken a sample data set which is of containing 200 time series and our goal is to cluster these time series into these three clusters. So now let's look at the steps of doing time series clustering on this data set. The the input is the time series data. first step is to decide the number of clusters which i am going to do using two approaches elbow method and silhouette score based method then we'll train the model using k means clustering model and finally we'll have the clusters this whole pipeline can be done using two approaches based on the distance measures which is either euclidean distance or dtw distance i'm going to take both of them and show which 
distance metric works better on this data set. So now let's start with the number of clusters decision. For the number of cluster decision using ELVO method, we need to plot sum of square distances on the y-axis with respect to the number of clusters on the x-axis. Some of, some of the square distances calculated, for example, by taking the distance of each point with respect to the centroid of that cluster and summing over for all the points. Once we have the sum of square distances, we need and we plot it with respect to number of clusters, we need to find a point where this distance is the least, but we also can't go for a very large number of clusters. So we need to find an optimum point, which is for this plot is plus number of clusters is equal to three. So this tells us that we should go ahead with number of clusters is equal to three. This is a simple example, simple data set, but in some cases, we need to also look at other approach, which, which is based on Silhart score. So how do we calculate Silhart score? It is calculated using this formula and it's range, it ranges from minus one to one. A value of close to one gives a well separated clusters and a value closer to minus one means that we have overlapping clusters. A value closer to zero means that the point is at the boundary of two clusters. So we need, we need to try to always get to closer to one. So now we understand what is Silhot score. I'm going to use this score to plot these graphs. So these graphs have, a, have been plotted using the Silhot scores of all the points. And I have plotted these graphs for the number of clusters to two, three and four. We are going to look at each of the plots separately and decide based on the plots, what is the best number of clusters. So let us look at the first plot. In the first plot, we see that this red line is the average Silhot score for all the points. And we see that the cluster zero Silhot scores are very low compared to the average. So in that scenario, we should reject this decision, number of clusters equal to two. Now we are left, left with two options three and four. Let's look at those plots. So we see that the Silhot scores of all the points are higher than the average for both cases. But for number of clusters equal to four, the cluster division is not equal. The cluster three and two are very small compared to the other clusters. But for, for this number of clusters equal to three, we have similar shaped clusters and they are containing almost equal number of points. So this is the better option and we should go ahead with number of clusters equal to three. So from two approaches, we can see that we, we can conclude that number of clusters equal to three is the best decision and that we should go ahead with. Now that is decided, we'll use that as a parameter and use k-means clustering to get to these results. The first plot is the actual clusters that we should get. Second plot, is for Euclidean distance results and the final plots are for the DTW based results. We can see that the DTW based results are very similar to the actual clusters. And this shows that DTW method works better than Euclidean for this data set. So we come to the end of this session. In the next session, I'm going to take another data set similar to this, but more challenging and apply time series clustering and show the results using both the approaches. I'm going to take another data set and implement time series clustering and show using this example, the classical problem, problem of unsupervised learning in which not one result is always correct and depends on opinions and the use cases. So let's get started. On in this data set, we have all this trends and out of which we would like to cluster these similar looking trends into one cluster and the other trends into these two clusters. Now let's look at the steps. These steps, I've already gone over them in the last session. So you can have a look in which we first take the number of cluster decision and then we do the model training and finally we get the clusters. So first, Start with the first step, 
number of clusters decision the number of cluster decision we have to plot the sum of square distances on the y axis with respect to the number of clusters on the x axis and we have to choose the point which which gives us as the least sum of square distance but also we can't create too many clusters so in that way for this plot we can either have 3 or 4 but it's difficult to decide from this plot so we'll be using another approach using slot score and try to decide the number of clusters so for this approach i plotted slot plots for all these options number of clusters 2 3 and 4 first let us look at the first plot for the first plot the cluster 0 slot score values are very small compared to the average so in that case we should be neglecting this option now we are left with two options let's look at the this plot for this plot if you look at the cluster 0 closely you can see for some of the points the slot values are negative it means that those points have been clustered into the wrong cluster so in that way we should be going ahead with number of clusters to 3 for this data set but sometimes based on the use case we may have to decide the number of clusters based on the use case and also based on observation for example suppose we are working with a data set in which these trends refer to some kind of activity of people so in that way we should be clustering all of them into the same cluster and create this cluster on the right but suppose in other scenario this blue boxed cluster time trends which have more fluctuations compared to the red ones refer to some different activity compared to the, these plots then in that case we should be creating two clusters like this because they refer to some other activity and we would like to cluster them separately so keeping that in mind i have generated two results one for three number of clusters and the other for four clusters and we'll be going over them so first look at the first set of results in this results we can see a euclidean based result and a dtw based result looking at them we can see the results are similar for both approaches what if we create four clusters if we create four clusters and it, if you look closely on both the cluster this results from both the approaches we will see that the dtw based method gives result more closer to the expected clusters for example you can look at the last two plots we wanted to have the fluctuating plots together in the same cluster which we get in dtw based result here but in the euclidean one we have an overlap of both of them so in this way we can say that dtw based approach works better for this data set so we come to the end of this series on time series clustering thank you for watching